You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hi, everyone. Before I get started on today's episode, just a quick reminder for everyone, or I guess some new information for those new listeners. I'm posting daily mini episodes all January and February in the run-up to my annual Arts Madness Tournament. Every March, I like to invite listeners to vote for their favorites in a series of head-to-head matches as we go from 64 down to one ultimate artist. This year, 60 of those artists and artworks will be pulled from the AP Art History curriculum to help high school students across the U.S. who are working to learn about 250 different artworks in the hopes of earning some college credit. The other four will be a couple of wildcard entries I pull from fan favorite episodes. While many of these are going to be artists I have covered in previous episodes, some will be recut to add a little bit more, and every Monday I'll have a totally new episode. I'm hoping you'll enjoy spending a few minutes each day with me to learn a little bit about a whole lot of great art. Now, on with the show. I feel like who art ed? Who art is Mr. Wood art ed me? <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's <laughs> ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it's a great start. Welcome to Who Arted Weekly Art History for All Ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're looking at Alfred Stieglitz. Now, Stieglitz was born in Hoboken, New Jersey on January 1st, 1864. His parents were German immigrants. His father served as a lieutenant in the Union Army and worked as a wool merchant. Growing up, Stieglitz would summer at Lake George in the Adirondack Mountains. Now, I'm not sure exactly how wealthy his family was, but the fact that they used summer as a verb is a pretty clear indication that they were very comfortable financially. After Alfred's junior year in high school, his father decided the education he was receiving was inadequate. In 1881, Edward Stieglitz actually sold his company for $40,000, which would be the equivalent of about $1.2 million today, and he moved the family to Europe for a few years so they could have better opportunities. Alfred studied mechanical engineering, and he also studied chemistry under Hermann Wilhelm Vogel, a chemist who discovered dye sensitization, which was really important for the development of photography. In 1884, his parents went back to America, but Alfred decided to stay in Germany. He bought his first camera and began collecting books on photography. Then he traveled through the Netherlands, Italy, and Germany, taking photographs. He said photography, quote, fascinated me, first as a toy, then as a passion, and then as an obsession, end quote. While Stieglitz was trained as a scientist, he was fascinated by the potential of photography as an art. Now, because the famous work we're talking about today, The Steerage from 1907, is so much about economics and social status, I think it's important to point out that Alfred Stieglitz came from money. While he was in Europe, he got a monthly allowance of $1,200, which would be the equivalent of about $37,000 today. When he came back to the U.S., his dad bought him a company so that he could work in his chosen field. But apparently, Alfred didn't really like to sell his photographs. It seems he treated his photo company more as a means of supporting his art rather than a typical business aimed at turning a profit. He did pay his employees a decent wage, but the photochrome engraving company rarely turned a profit. Stieglitz did gain a reputation for his quality photographs, though, and people liked his articles about photography as an art medium. In 1893, Stieglitz became the co-editor of the magazine The American Amateur Photographer. That same year, he married Emmeline Obermeyer. She was the sister of a close friend and business associate, and she had inherited a lot of money from her father, who owned a popular brewery. While both were born into a great deal of wealth and privilege, they didn't have a ton of other common interests. Stieglitz lamented the fact that she did not share his passion for photography and art more broadly, and he often talked about how he regretted the marriage. Skip ahead a few years. It's May 14th, 1907. His daughter Kitty is eight years old. Alfred is set to take the family on a vacation in Europe. 
Emmeline is eager to see relatives in Germany, and she looks forward to shopping in Paris. But Alfred, he's miserable. He feels uncomfortable mingling with the wealthy elites in his social circle. He would later recount, quote, The first-class atmosphere of the ship was unbearable. I longed to escape the company of the nouveau riche. Desperate, I sought refuge as far forward on the deck as possible. At the end of the deck, I stood alone, mesmerized by what lay below in the steerage. End quote. Stieglitz said he wanted to escape from the trappings of first class. He wanted to mingle with those on the lower decks, although on some level, I have to say, I find that a little irritating. I mean, the dude was literally looking down on a bunch of people and fantasizing about what their experience must be like, but let's consider the reality for a moment. This was a ship heading east to Europe rather than arriving in the U.S., Those pictured in the steerage were likely people returning home after laboring on a temporary visa or denied entry to the U.S. and forced to head back. While Stieglitz may have been unhappy with his choice of partner and a little irritated with the people in his social circle, I don't think he would really like to have been one of the people in the steerage, and He liked to say that he was sympathetic to the downtrodden, favored policies that welcomed immigrants, but he only favored welcoming well-educated and highly skilled immigrants. I feel like if it were up to him, the plaque on the Statue of Liberty would have said, give me your best, brightest, most upwardly mobile, yearning to get a little more. It all just reeks of a man who could not tell the difference between hitting a triple and simply being born on third base. But he apparently felt or wanted to feel some sort of connection with the hoi polloi down in steerage. He said he felt compelled to grab his camera in an attempt to capture that connection with the people and their interactions. His camera, at that time, used glass plate negatives, and he only had one glass plate ready to go, meaning he only had one shot to capture the moment. The photograph goes beyond simply documenting an event. He captured ideas and a feeling that resonated with quite a few people. For many, the image feels political as it speaks to the experiences of people yearning to come to America and those being turned away. The photo captured by the son of immigrants who lived the American dream shows those for whom that dream appears to be just out of reach. There's a fragmentation that seems both literal and figurative as the gleaming white bridge cuts through the picture, but also there's a social divide between Stieglitz, the photographer with comfortable first-class accommodations, and the passengers on the lower deck, commonly referred to as the steerage. A reporter who traveled undercover in 1910 wrote that during his time on the steerage, he regularly had to remove worms and other bugs from his food prior to eating it. Now, somehow, I doubt Stieglitz was identifying with that aspect of their journey. But heading back to the photograph, one of the markers of success in a work of art is that people can interpret that piece in different ways and appreciate it on different levels. While many have an emotional reaction to the piece, or see political implications, Stieglitz himself seemed to look at it through a more formalist lens, saying, quote, On the upper deck, looking over the railing, there was a young man with a straw hat. The shape of the hat was round. He was watching the men and women and children on the lower steerage deck. A round straw hat, the funnel leaning left, the stairway leaning right, the white drawbridge with its railing made of circular chains, white suspenders crossing on the back of a man in the steerage below, round shapes of iron machinery, a mast cutting into the sky, making a triangular shape. I saw shapes related to each other. I was inspired by a picture of shapes and underlying that, the feeling I had about life, end quote. This photograph was approached in a way that felt like modern abstraction, looking at formal aspects, the arrangement of elements, such as the line and shape, in order to convey a more grand concept. Of course, the artist's intention is only one side of the dialogue in art. As viewers discover a work and make their own connections, 
They find new interpretations, and the art takes on a life of its own beyond anything the artist envisioned. I find it interesting that while Stieglitz took the photo in 1907, he didn't publish it until 1911. I'm just going to say, I don't think he grasped the power of the image and all of its implications when he took it. When it was seen by a wider audience, though, it hit a little bit different. And while he may not have been too eager to show the work when it was first created, near the end of his career, Alfred Stieglitz said that if all his other photos were lost, he would be satisfied to have just the steerage to represent him. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.